like how losing did, your how identity. Did, yeah. How oh. did all that, like, what did you go through? Like, let's go into the, the depths, if you don't mind, of that darkness and then finding ways to get yourself out of that. Yeah. Like, um, so losing your identity, I think is huge. Then trying to repair your identity, but having eight failures, yeah. I think is, it goes down even more. And then also you must've been in a state of depression where you must've been like, I don't know where to go from here. For sure. So, so there's, there's that, there's those three factors. And then there's the real factor of chronic pain that I'm dealing with too. Fuck. And the day. chronic pain thing, man, like to describe it, like where I, while I've never felt with any like depression in my life but prior to this, and it wasn't really until after that I'm able to realize what I'm doing, what I have going on. I get you. Um, but man, the chronic pain thing, it's like my pain level was always between a two and an eight. So it's never less than that. Not if I'm laying still flat, it's never not a two. What do you consider a, what do you consider a toothache? What level of pain is that? So I can kind of understand. Uh, I mean, it depends on how bad the toothache is, but I don't know, one. A one? Yeah. Like when you oh, stub your toe in the middle of the night on the couch, what is that? But that's such an acute pain, oh, right? I see. Like, so acute pain is a really different thing. Versus chronic. The chronic pain thing is a, it's a two, but it never fucking goes away. It's essentially like trying to manage your day and, and Tyka 100% tugging at you saying, hey, 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 Oh my hey. God. But even if you stop to address him, he just doesn't stop. Yeah. Oh shit. And so like you can go and hang out with friends. But there's still the hey, hey, hey. And it can be loud enough you don't notice it. Hmm. But as soon as you're by yourself, you're there. And it must affect your sleep too. Dude, sleep's bad. I'm, I'm also sleeping a bunch of nights in a straight leg brace. Like, oh. And, and then throw in, you know, A, you know, marriage. And yeah. so during that stretch of time too, we were, we were trying to have a kid. So 18 months of trying to have a kid while I'm trying oh. to do surgeries, while it's just Running too much. a new business. It's Being just an too athlete. much. <laughs> it's just too much. You know, and uh, the marriage lost. It was a real bummer. Um, but we had we had to go forward, you know. Yeah. And uh, and was that due to all of these things happening, or is it because you guys just changed as people? Both. Oh shit. Both, and I think this was a big part of that change for me. Uh, was it? It all started really. The big change for me started whenever my my dad had passed away in uh, 2014. So that happens in. April. So my dad dies the day before my birthday. Oh my, oh my God, God, dude. In April. Uh, so he dies at 62 from pancreatic cancer. I turn 31 the next day. And all I can think about is like halfway. You're fucking halfway there. Half of your life's gone. Holy and so shit. like, man, that translates to me. That, that translates to 1612 weeks. That's it. That's all of it. You know, and maybe the cards are stacked in my favor to be a little bit older than 62 when I go, but that ain't guaranteed. And I'll live accordingly. And so. So that moment right so there. So that was a shifted pivotal. a bunch. That shifted a bunch of like, if that's true and I do have this amount of time left, that means all my dreams, everything I want to experience, everything I can ever think of has to happen in the next 1612 weeks. God damn. Or it doesn't. That's it. And so get busy. So try to shift into that. And then, you know, that's 2014. So then I start the apparel company and things are building momentum. And then there's this. And so it's fight. Still feel the same way about my life and then trying to figure it out. And so at this point, dude, I am doing everything I can figure out to mitigate the chronic pain. So I've switched my diet. I'm down 60 pounds. I've done carnivore for eight months because it's anti-inflammatory. I've done keto for a really long time. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying peptides I'm growth hormone. Uh, you know, if it's a possibility to help, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. yeah. Two to eight, uh, pain, chronic pain. And, I and, get it. And so when it was bad and what would cause it to go bad was like, oh, maybe I walked too far that day, like 200 <sighs> yards total. Wow. Not like at once. Yeah. And like, I mean, I can't step upstairs. I can't. And, uh, when it was really bad and really inflamed, like I would get a shooting pain that I would say is like a nine out of 10 because it could be worse. I could be on fire. Right. So it's not a 10. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know that 10 exists and I don't know if zero exists, but so that's where I am. I'd get this like stabbing pain on the medial side of my knee. Uh, every time I exhale, 
Oh and no! When it hits, are you like stumbling to look for pills? Or are you like you're like I gotta take something to make this I, go I, away? I switched to cannabis, like so. I, I just and that opiates, helped, dude. It helped me a ton. So opiates work; they make the pain go away. But I can't do anything else. <laughs> you're fucking just part of the couch. Yeah, and I mean, look, <laughs> time and a place. Like if I if pain for me gets to an eight or a nine, that that's what we're doing. But if it's a two, I don't need. A Percocet. I need another option. And so cannabis helped me a ton with that. That that was a really big game changer for me of figuring out how to mitigate with that. Um, you know, so you don't feel the pain anymore and you're able to function? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So to an extent, you know, um, it, it and it definitely kept me happier. I know I'm more depressed the more that I take Vicodin or opiates. 